Hi guys, today we are going to be installing GIMP 2.10. It is finally out. It was released yesterday. Um, I was going to do this tutorial yesterday, but uh, they didn't have a Windows installer at the time. Uh, today they do have a Windows installer, so all we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and click on download 2.10. And it's going to go there. Uh, I'm not going to download it via uh, torrent today. I'm just going to go ahead and download it directly. And you'll just want to click on download directly and it will download an installer for you. I will be back after it downloads. All right, guys, GIMP has downloaded. Um, I have a pretty fast download speed. I have like 200 meg download uh, and it still took a little bit over two minutes so it may be faster for you guys to download uh, the torrent especially you got you guys that have slower internet speeds sometimes downloading from the torrent can speed things up so let's go ahead and we're just gonna click on the installer from here from Chrome and I'm just going to run it and we're gonna go through the install process of this today and then I'm gonna go through and we're going to look at some things and I'm going to show you how to install some themes and all that good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, my language is English. That's fine. They have quite a bit of languages here. You can choose your own language and I'm just going to press OK. Oh, that's cool. They got a little GIMP install window. That's cool. Um, I'm just going to install it normally. You could go ahead and customize if you want to do that. I'm just going to go through the normal install today and it's going to extract the files and I will speed this up. Alrighty guys, the setup has finished. Um, it took a little bit longer than the GIMP point, what was it, GIMP point, or I'm sorry, it was GIMP version 2.22, I believe it was, the, the last version. It seemed like uh, it took a little bit longer for, for this to install. But I'm gonna go ahead and click finish, and then I'm gonna close out the browser, and I'm going to, I'm on Windows 10, so I'm just gonna go on the search bar and search for GIMP and I'm just going to right click on it and I'm gonna pin it to my taskbar and then I'm just going to come down here and open it up oh that's a nice little splash screen they got going on for the 2.10 I'll speed this process up a little bit too because it's uh, the first time I've opened it so it's going to uh, look for all the fonts I have on my computer and this part takes a little while Alrighty guys, I've came up with a little error here. I'm not sure what this error is, but I'm going to just go ahead and click OK. And here's another one. And another one. And another one. Alrighty, so I had uh, GIMP installed before. That might have been uh, the reason why I was getting those errors, because uh, this GIMP... Uh, popped up with the old way I had it so maybe that's the reason why it was uh, doing that let's go to about GIMP 2.10 so everything's set up so I'm gonna go through and I'm going to put this back to the way that it might have been and I will be right back all right guys I am back um, there was a couple of folders that I had to go ahead and delete uh, it still didn't uh, completely go back to a factory um, install but that's okay I kind of set it up how I remembered how a factory install would come and then again maybe uh, the new GIMP 2.10 has a new layout I'm not too sure since this is my first time installing it and uh, I don't remember reading anything about them changing the default layout so if yours when you install it if yours turns out something like this we're just gonna go through the steps to um, get it looking like uh, a little bit towards the the Photoshop look so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Windows and then I'm gonna put it to single Windows mode and that's going to make it be a single window and I'm just going to go ahead and dock it up there and yours probably looks something like this 
And if it's if it don't if it doesn't, then that's okay. The first thing that I'm going to do, the way I like setting it up, is I like taking the tools and I like docking the tools in the middle. So if you hover over here, or maybe if you hover up top, let's see. Okay, so we got them split. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to click on this little backwards uh, YouTube looking logo thing here and I'm going to add a tab here and I'm just going to add anything uh, the selection editor maybe and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the undo history up to the top and then I will drag the tool options to the bottom just like that and then I'll go ahead and click back over here and close this tab I like having three tabs because I have real estate on my monitor for this and the next thing I like doing is I like having my layers channels and paths all down here in one at the bottom uh, and then the tool options and then there's one more thing that I like having up and we're gonna just go ahead and add the tab and then we are going to add the navigation I like having the navigation up here along with the undo history because uh, sometimes for me it's easier when I'm using uh, my tablet and things of that nature or I'm drawing I like seeing the full image here and then I like being able to come over here to my undo history and just clicking up here instead of pressing Control Z a bunch sometimes it helps a lot the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag this window all the way as far as it will go to the left and then I'm going to file and I'm going to do new and I'm going to create a new image 1920 by 1080 like I said it's remembering my settings from before I'm gonna to have to do some research uh, to look in to see how I can completely uh, delete everything because I deleted the GIMP 2.0 folders and the dot uh, 2.8 folder that I had uh, but it's still remembering my settings from before so I do apologize for that um, and the advanced options that all looks okay I'm just going to press OK and because this I think this remembered all my settings I think that there is going to be uh, some things that I don't have to do but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do it anyways um, the one thing that I wanted to show you guys was the new look of the when you create a new layer so you could do color tags now so we can color this you know you got your lion art or, or anything of of that sort and you could color your layers now so I'm gonna go ahead and I don't know let me click on green make sure it's visible you could link it you could do all the presets here before you click OK and then having to come over here and do all that uh, normal mode it's got the opacity um, the you could change the width and height of the layer change that's that's pretty cool you can do transparency you can fill it with white foreground color background color and a pattern that's pretty awesome and then you just press OK and now you'll see over here let me expand this a little bit for you guys you can see that now this layer is green I'm gonna come over here and if you press shift T that brings up your transform tool and my thing is set up like how I like it but yours will probably look if we come over here into the tool options yours will probably look like it will have a uh, number of lines just like this I personally I don't like this uh, it's distracting to me now sometimes when you're doing deformations or something to your your image these lines are nice and they help uh, but me personally I don't really uh, do deformations that much and when I do it's always easy to come over here and change this to guides or whatever you like um, I like having no guides on all my transformation tools I just like it and it, it's uh, gives me a view of the full image and all that good stuff so I'm just gonna change that to no guides and then I'm just going to come out of here and we'll just exit out of that and the next thing I'm going to do is shift s for the scale and it's the same thing so you will just want to come over to the guides and click on no guides if you guys like no guides and Let's see, there's one or two more that has that. Let's see, the shear tool. And I think that is pretty much it. So we got transform tool, rotate tool, the scale tool. Actually, nope, the rotate tool is the one 
is another one. So you'll want to come over to the guides and change it to no guides. And I'm just going to not do that. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer and come back over here. And maybe I'll just change the color to purple this time to just demonstrate you guys that that that's that's a pretty cool feature. Um, so the next thing that I like doing is I like having my move tool. So it's on pick layer or a guide right now. I don't like having it set like that. So that's one thing that changed. Uh, so I'm going to go to move active layer. I like having that uh, move active layer and we're setting these properties right now because we're going to go up into preferences and we're going to save all our tool options. And that way, every time you open up GIMP, you'll, they'll, all these settings will be how you like them and you never have to go through and change them again. So I'm going to choose move active layer there. Okay. So they got the gradient tool now. And as you can see, these handles light up now and you got different options of changing the gradient tool. Here now in the old GIMP, you didn't have that option. And so you can change it on the fly like that. That is super, super nice. And I really like that feature. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that. And we'll just go up here to uh, edit and then go into preferences and we'll run through the preferences real quick. So they got color management now in here, image import and export. And then here's your tool options. You can come in here and you can change your grid style. The one cool thing that I wanted to show you guys about this new 2.10 build is going to the themes. Now, if you are just brand new to GIMP, this will be, well, it'll be a new feature to you, but uh, to people that's been using GIMP for a long time, uh, everybody will know how much of an awesome feature this is because in Windows, you used to not be able to do this. So we'll just run through here. So I'll double click on the gray. Oh, wow. Look at that. It updates automatically <laughs> before you used to have to choose your theme and you would have to close GIMP and reopen GIMP uh, to see that theme take chain uh, take place. And in Linux, you didn't have to do that. I'm not sure about uh, Mac. I don't remember, but I know in Linux it updated on the fly automatically like it is here in GIMP. So it looks like uh, this GIMP is coming with uh, three f themes now too, the light, the gray, and the dark. I'm not too sure if the old themes will work in this GIMP. It, it should, but I like dark themes. And a matter of fact, I really like this theme, so I don't think I'm going to change to any other theme. Um, they got icon themes now, so you can change your icon themes now. So they got symbolic, legacy, and color. I'm not sure what color is. Oh, okay. So you can switch these change on the fly too. So you can switch to where they're colored. And then the legacy ones. So that's the old look. And the symbolic. And then they got symbolic inverter. Which should change them dark, which that makes no sense. So we'll go back to symbolic. I kind of like these like this. The color is pretty cool too. Um, here in the toolbox. This is all your tools that get docked over here on the left hand side here. So you could go through here and you could turn on things and turn off things that you would like. I always keep the brightness contract, contrast, threshold, levels, curves, all this stuff. I keep them off because I don't like coming over here to click on them and you can turn them into shortcuts on all that good stuff. I just like coming up here to use those. So I turn them off and it frees up more space over here. Uh, they still haven't got rid of this text down here which is annoying uh, down here but that's okay dialogue defaults you got your help system and then they got display and you can do mid-tone checks medium size all that good stuff and then window management so hint for utility window keep above normal window all the default stuff we've come to appearance and you can change your padding from the theme and all that good stuff. I always leave all this stuff alone. Snapping. So you can snap to grid or snap to guides. I always keep it snap to guides. Uh, I don't never use the snap to grid feature. 
your input controllers so this is where you come and do your mouse wheel and all that stuff and speaking of that we'll go ahead and do that now so I'm gonna click on the mouse wheel and I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to come here and I'm gonna scroll down and look for scroll up right here so I have the scroll up for view zoom in but we could right, double click on that and then come here and then you just type in zoom and you'll see if I make this a little bit bigger it went to zoom in and the zoom in one that you want which it looks like they've changed it's the view zoom in Excel uh, there used to be like a little mouse looking icon here uh, that way you knew it was the mouse but it looks like it's the view zoom in Excel one now so you just click on that and you'll just press OK and make that one for the scroll up and then for the scroll down it's the same thing so you just double click on it type in zoom and then zoom out click on view zoom out Excel and then press OK and that will set it so you can zoom in and out with your mouse wheel um, like I said a lot of these features and I do apologize for this but for some reason I could not get my settings to clear uh, through here so I'm not sure if GIMP comes with these pre-installed and if they do that's awesome uh, because it didn't used to be like that but if they don't I'm showing you guys how to do it here now and then we'll just close that that's it for the mouse wheel I like zooming in and out with my mouse wheel um, and over here you got your direct X input and your keyboard and all that good stuff you could double click on these and you could see what these are and you could map your keys and stuff to different things the next thing is the folders so we'll just click this plus and it gives you access to your brushes so if you got a special folder that you keep on your somewheres in your desktop or or documents or wherever you keep it at here you want to click the plus and you want to find that folder and then add it here and then GIMP will go through and look to see that brush folder for you and then you just want to press OK and it's the same for dynamics patterns palettes gradients fonts tool presets uh, and all that good stuff plugins so if you're ever having a problem especially with plugins I get this question a lot if you're ever having a problem with plugins and it won't find your plugin folder you could go ahead and find your uh, plugins folder you can make one on your desktop or whatever and just add it and the same thing for themes and icon themes and all that good stuff and let's see here I think that is pretty much it for here in the preferences you'll want to go back to your toolbox and make sure that you have everything here um, and then we'll scroll down to or st scroll up I'm sorry to tool options and after you made all your changes to the tools that you wanted and you got everything set up how you wanted you'll just want to click on save tool options now and that's all you do and then you will press OK and every time you come in it will be set to those tool options uh, one thing I did make a mistake I clicked that on the gradient tool I'm gonna go back and click on the paintbrush tool and just come back in here and go back to the preferences and I'm gonna come back to the tool options and I'm gonna save the tools now just that way every time I log in it's logged in on a brush and you could also do that for the brush size and all that good stuff control Z that and we've got all our brushes let's make sure that everything looks fine so I hope you guys enjoyed this video for more tutorials please like and subscribe and I will see you next time